Hey there, topspeed.com viewers. It is I, Christian Mo, and this means it's time for another in-car driving review. This week we are in the 2015 Subaru WRX STI. Now, the last time I reviewed a Subaru, it was the 2015 Outback, and um, I made some enemies because I didn't really enjoy it. I thought it was fat and terrible and too slow and not enough improved and it was too soft to wear a Subaru badge. It just wasn't fun and funky and rally car enough to be called Subaru. Um, so I should love the crap out of this thing. And I can tell you what, at first blush, I do. I do a lot. Um, in a lot of ways, this car is kind of like a Fiat 500 Abarth. So I have a rally tuned suspension and I have lightweight alloy wheels and Brembo brakes and almost no sound insulation. So um, hopefully the mic is doing a good job of tuning most of it out, but it's very loud in here. You can sort of see I'm bouncing around a bit over every bump. The suspension is super stiff. It's great. I've got a manual transmission, six speeds. I have a complicated all wheel drive system that I can alter the diff levels at. So I'm either more all-wheel drive or more rear-wheel drive. And then I've got this engine. I have a flat six. It's an EJ25, which is the same 2.5 liter flat six that Subaru's been using since the 90s. Uh, got a super, or got a tur turbocharged on it, rather, uh, making 305 horse horsepower. Um, it's just a good little thing to drive. Um, you know, steering, super quick, super precise. It's perhaps not as heavy as I would like. Um, it's not quite as communicative as I would like, but it's very good. It gets the job done. Um, gives you a lot of confidence to beat on this thing. I am driving quickly, and the car just behaves and responds. The Brembos are great. You hit the pedal, it comes down from speed hard and fast. Stand on the throttle and it responds instantly. Oh. And I'm currently driving in the super slow old man intelligent mode with the automatic diff. If I want to, I can press this little knob in the center. You see, if I decide that I need to go faster, I've got this little knob here. You push it in, it gives you the intelligence mode, which is sort of the least powerful curve on the, on the power band for throttle response. And then you can twist it left to go sport, twist it right to go sport sharp. And then we have the auto manual mode for the differential. Now you can see it up here on the dash, when in manual mode I've got several settings for the differential. If I pull it all the way back, it forces as much power as possible to the rear wheels, and if I press it all the way forward to full lock, that locks me at a full 50-50 front to rear. So if you want a more rear wheel drive sports car kind of feel, you can crack it all back, or if you want maximum traction, you push it all the way forward. Once you get it into sport sharp mode, throttle is super responsive, power is instantaneous and the thing just wants to be flogged on um, even though I started this video in the little nice slower going in intelligent mode um, I've actually found I prefer the sport sharp I just like having the really crisp throttle so that's what I've been driving around most of the time in is with sport sharp mode um, I've been leaving the diff in the automatic mode but with automatic you can sort of ask it to send a little more power to the rear or a little more power to the front and so I've been keeping it in auto with power to the rear. That's been my general settings for the car and um, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun to drive. It is everything that I look for in a Subaru. Um, like I said, I've got this super stiff bouncy like rally suspension. Um, you know, I've got nice ride height. There's a lot of space in here. A lot of glass so it feels very open it's it's very nice but being a traditional Subaru and all those things that I like this car also comes with a lot of the traditional Subaru things that aren't so great so I mentioned the cheap interior earlier and this definitely has it I mean yes I am in the fancy limited trim so I've got these great leather seats with this nice red contrast nice little stitching cuts STI embossed in the headrest that's all very nice and well, but I also have cheap plastic up here on the dash, cheap plastic here on the steering wheel. Um, I have a carbon fiber trim that's painted, it's not real. Um, you know, there's a lot of things like that. The stereo in this thing is awful. I mean, really, really bad. It seems essentially like they just gave me the dead base stereo from a normal Impreza. There's just 
not a lot about this car that screams awesome or impressive other than the power. Um, and that's a problem because this car as it sits, and again, I've got the window sticker here because hey, window stickers. This car as it sits with no options, this is a dead base STI Limited. So it's a dead base upper trim model. It is $39,290. So I am paying $40,000 for a car with cheap plastic, a car that, I don't know if you can see it from this angle, but the um, center console here is falling out of the car and I can't get it to snap back up, it's just falling out. The sunroof likes to rattle and I just, I have a hard time with that. It's $40,000, it has 7,000 miles. It just rolled over 7,000 7, miles and it's falling apart and I've got cheap plastic everywhere. That bothers me a lot. You know, I, I understand they're not the same kind of car, but like the Toyota Avalon that I had was $40,000. That thing was massive and full of leather and technology. I don't even have navigation. I have no extra options in here. $40,000 and I have no navigation system. And I understand that most of that money is going to the cool trick diff, the turbocharged engine, and the suspension, the Brembo brakes. Like it's going to all those performance bits. But for $30,000, I can get a Mustang with a V8 and 400 horsepower. You know, so I can get more power for less. If I want Brembo brakes, there are cars, like in fact, back to the Mustang, you can buy the GT performance pack, whatever, that comes with Brembo brakes. And you're still gonna be $5,000 cheaper than this. And then there's the WRX. WRX, the differential's not as nice. You don't get the Brembo brakes but it's still a Subaru with Subaru all-wheel drive and it's still a turbocharged flat four and that makes like 260 horsepower, which is only 40 less. And you can get one of those for 25,000. That's $15,000. So I could buy a WRX and a Ford Fiesta for the same price as this STI. That makes it really hard for me to recommend, especially if you start thinking about aftermarket stuff. Because I can promise you, it is not very difficult to push a WRX to 300 horsepower. And you could do that for far less than five grand. But let's say you spent five grand on new wheels, some nicer brakes, an exhaust kit, and a tune for your WRX to push it up to 305 horsepower. You're still $10,000 cheaper than this car. And I think that's a big problem for Subaru. Um, I, I will admit, this thing works well. Uh, I didn't have cameras with me, but uh, I found a nice, seemed to be mostly abandoned gravel road, and I beat the hell out of this thing as hard as I could, and it just laughed at me and asked for more. Like, as that whole, it's a rally car thing, this car is legitimate, and it works, and it's amazing. As a machine to own and drive and just have as a car, I don't know if it makes a very good car. It is cheap. It does ride rough. It is very loud in here, and it is still $40,000. For that price, you could have an M235i. You could almost have the all-wheel drive version of an M235i. The Volvo S60 I had last week was $44,000. Like, there's a lot of cars you can get once you hit this price range, and I'm just not sure how Subaru can ask people to pay that for this. Um, now, as you may have seen, our other friend Mark, he had one of these, but he had the lower trim model with the cloth seats and all that, and that was only $35,000. That makes me feel a lot more comfortable about recommending this as a machine to buy, but currently, at this $40,000 price tag, I'd really have to say the WRX is the better buy. So overall recap, 2015 Subaru WRX STI. It is a proper Subaru truly proper Subaru. It has one of my favorite suspensions I've ever had in any car. It's stiff, it's heavy, it rides like it's made out of granite, but when you hit the turns, it is flat and it is amazing and it is perfect. Trick diff, super cool. I love the fact that I can crank down on the diff and the back end wants to slide out because Subaru is forcing it to be a mostly rear wheel drive car. The engine, it's a thousand years old, and it's probably still gonna have a lot of the problems that the old engines had, but you hit the pedal, it 
revs all the way up to that 7,000 RPM red, red line, and it just produces power everywhere, all the time. It makes a cool noise. It's awesome. This is, like, like I said earlier, it, it's a lot like the Fiat 500 apart. This is an incredible toy, and I want one. If anyone ever asks me if they should buy one, I'd tell them no. Um, if you are a true performance enthusiast, looking for a true performance machine, and you don't mind blowing obscene amounts of money, this is a hell of a way to have fun. Um, the fuel economy is terrible. Uh, I'm averaging 21. Sticker says I should be able to get up to 23. Um, so that's great. But I have seen seven and a half. That was what I what I saw when I first got this car. 7.5 miles to the gallon. But I don't care. Like, listen to that noise. Like, that's... Gas mileage doesn't matter. That noise is great. Anyways, Subaru WRX STI for 2015. Brand new generation car. Um, engine's still the same old, same old. That's fine. Transmission's still the same old, same old. That's fine. Differential's still the same old, same old. That's fine. The new chassis's great. It handles like a dream. Produces shit tons of power. It's just built like utter garbage, and it's not very well equipped. So if you can get over those... It's an alright machine, and I think you should buy one. So, yes, if you're wondering if I like this a lot more than I liked the Outback, I, I, I like this a lot more than I like the Outback. This is a true proper, proper Subaru, and I enjoy beating the living crap out of it. So once again, Christian Mo for TopSpeed.com. This has been an in-car driving review. If you have questions about this car, or you want to know more about my in-depth thoughts, there will be a full written review over on TopSpeed.com. As always, you can listen to us banter about these machines on the TopSpeed.com podcast. TopSpeed.com podcast comes to you live just about every Thursday. We take a day off occasionally now, now and then, but we're there pretty much every Thursday right around noon. You can tune in live on YouTube and chat with us, ask us questions right there on the spot. we love to have you. Otherwise, I want everyone to have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there driving. I'll see you guys next time.